Uh, now uh, my job is, uh, you know, how do we integrate uh, the, the components of NAFLD into the existing, uh, you know, NPC DCS program? Now, this is what I'm trying to do in the next uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes. Well, we started uh, uh, around 1975 uh, when India started, you know, responding to the NCD challenges with uh, some vertical national programs. And we tried to pilot that in about 10 districts in 2008. And by 2010, uh, uh, we have uh, the program of NPC DCS uh, being implemented in about, in about uh, 100 districts of 21 states. And then NHM happened and it was rolled out in 36 states in 2013-14. And uh, we have <clears throat> the number still counting to about 468 in 2015-16. And then there is the paradigm shift and we had the introduction of the comprehensive primary healthcare package through the health and well, uh, welfare centers and the population-based screening for the common entities uh, had also happened in 2018. And now we are in 2021, when we are trying to integrate yet one more component of, uh, of uh, NCD um, uh, to it, and that is what we call the non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease or the NFL. So the program, uh, if I have to, you know, give a glimpse of that, uh, has got uh, certain objectives, like one of them obviously is the health promotion. Uh, second, as I said, is the population based screening and with the population base we still also continue our opportunity screening at all healthcare levels and the prevention and control of the chronic NCDs of course is the main backbone of this disease and we do a lot of capacity building in, in the various components of the program and we have uh, support for the diagnostic and other uh, you know uh, therapeutic measures at all levels of the healthcare delivery system. So the, to do this, we have got the NPCDCS infrastructure across the country in the form of the state or the UT NCD cell. This is the administrative cell, um, you know, housed at the headquarters of the state. And similar structures are also there in about 678, uh, um, you know, districts. Uh, but the, the primary uh, area of care uh, comes in the district NCD clinics where we have, uh, which we have in about 648, uh, 43 districts and we are still counting. And we also have uh, for the component of the cardiovascular diseases, we have got dedicated cardiac care units or the CCUs in about 190 of these, uh, of the districts in the country. And for the chemotherapy component of the cancer care, we have the district daycare centers in about 237 uh, district hospitals. And if you go down to the CACs, uh, we have got uh, the NCD clinics in about 4,807. And uh, as I said, uh, the population based screening, which happens at the doorstep, is joined by the referral of the continuum of care to the AM and then to the sub center and to the medical officer at the PAC and the NCD clinics at the CAC district hospital. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the tertiary care center. So this uh, continuum of care, we are trying to you know, capture uh, digitally throughout as well. And uh, let me give you uh, something about uh, the population-based screening, which is uh, a package of uh, the comprehensive uh, primary health care now. Uh, we are targeting those people about 30 years of age, um, but let me warn you here that you know, when we say screening, uh, it doesn't mean that you know um, the, 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 those people who are below below 30 and who who wants to get themselves screened cannot drop in at the NCD clinic. They can very well drop in, but those screenings which are happening at the doorstep by the ASHA, we are targeting uh, the 30 plus uh, years of age uh, as of now, and uh, <clears throat> and the ASHA comes with a com comprehensive, uh, you know, uh, we call it uh, community-based assessment checklist or the CBEC form, and then the ASHA screens them, and based on the score uh, which the person has. The, the patient is being referred to the AM and then higher up. So uh, this is the first step where the healthcare worker is is, is getting in touch with uh, with the person and taking history. So this is the first point where we are doing health promotion as well. So if you if you see this program from the NAFL point of view, we are already asking the height. We are also measuring the uh, the weight, and we are now thinking of providing. Uh, you know, some component in the app which the ASHA is using for calculating the BMI as well. So 
for somebody whose weight is being measured, whose height is being measured, and whose BMI is being calculated here. That is the first step when he is being, you know, sensitized for some other disease which could happen to him if he happens to, you know, falter in this uh, in these uh, uh, measurements, uh, which is, you know, that that disease in my in our mind is an NFL. Of course, if we take care of the high weight, it will not just take care of the nephil, it will also take care of many of the diseases. But if you see from the nephil point of view, this is the first point uh, uh, which we are having uh, with the community. Then the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, now we all know it's a buildup of the extra fat in liver cells. Uh, and that not necessarily is caused by alcohol. Alcohol also causes uh, certain kind of uh, diseases for which we are also aware and we are also doing it. But uh, it should not have this impression that if you are not drinking, if you are not, uh, you know, uh, using alcohol excessively uh, or not not drinking at all. But if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't take care of the, uh, the fats getting deposited in your liver because of faulty lifestyle, eating habits and also physical uh, inactivity, uh, we should not, you know, keep on thinking that NFLD or fatty liver is not going to happen to that person. So it's uh, we all know that it's normal for the liver to contain some fat, but even among the doctors also, you know, if you see 15% or 20% fat, uh, the, the, some of us may just brush it up saying that, oh, this is quite common nowadays. But that's why we are having this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease uh, in order to increase our awareness about the presence of uh, fatty liver leading to some other uh, complication. The burden, which we have already understood, the huge burden of NCDs, and in that huge burden of NCDs, we also know that uh, for the prevalence of NFLD, it's about 30% of the general population. So if you take, take care of this 30% of the population by you know making certain changes in an existing program of NPCDCS, we will be taking care of that 30% of population. We already have a mechanism where, uh, fortunately, there is an interface between the healthcare worker in the form of ASHA or NM and the potential patients of NAFLD. And it is right time, it is high time that we all, you know, uh, end cash on that opportunity. So two thirds of the diabetics uh, uh, usually have the NAFLD. So if you take care of the NAFLD, you can also know that uh, we can also, you know, uh, note that two thirds of those diabetics are also going to be uh, taken care of. So in a way, uh, the, the confluence of the risk factors for the NAFLD uh, and NCDs, I said uh, in the beginning also are quite common with some emphasis, um, emphasis on uh, some areas um, uh, for NAFLD, particularly the metabolic syndrome, uh, hypercholesterolemia, then obesity, diabetes mellitus, and the risk factors of physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, and you know, suffering from hypertension, family history, et cetera. So, uh, so many of the risk factors are common. So when you take care of the risk factors, like if you become, you know, physically healthy food, it's not just for the liver, but it is also for the other NCD. So this is a win-win situation for both. And and we we have got we, we have got enough reasons now why we were targeting the NFLD. So the ministry uh, has uh, already uh, released an operational guidelines, uh, in, which was you know uh, prepared in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, MHSRC, the DGHS, the ILBS, and other partners like UNDP and WHO. We have had a series of uh, you know sensitization workshop trying to tell the liver is in the focus of you know uh, of the NCD program, and if you take care of liver, many of the NCD. Uh, and so these in the NPCTCS program would be taken care of. So this is the launch of the uh, of the NFLD operational guidelines. And uh, fortunately, we are happy to announce that India is, in fact, the first country in the world to identify the need for exam for NFLD in the form of uh, of a national program. So the NCD program uh, has got another feather in it that NFLD is being uh, you know uh, incorporated into uh, the existing program. So how we are trying to do this, now, I had already explained the infrastructure. So uh, the health promotion awareness generates screening early activity, and, uh, you know, timely, affordable, accurate diagnosis, and then providing affordable treatment and rehabilitation, wherever required. This is usually the stages, not just for NFLD, but for any of the lifestyle related diseases. But let us try to customize it for NFLD. Now the proposed 
promotion and prevention of activities for NFLD. Uh, I had already told you that the ASHA visiting and asking you those questions or measuring your parameters is also a health promotion strategy already. So about, uh, uh, over and above that, we will be now indicating, uh, we will be now integrating the healthy liver messages in our mass, mid media or social media campaigns of the ministry. And we are also going to celebrate, uh, you know, many health days with the liver in focus. Coming up now on 19th of April is the World Liver Day. And we are around that time, we'll be having a lot of sensitization workshops across the country so that we uh, we we, uh, we sensitize ourselves, not just uh, not just the patients or the population, but the medical uh, the the, men, uh, the the health functionaries on issues of uh, NFLD. Now um, the current activities under NPCDCS, as I already told you, is ASA is already doing this, and in the proposed activities for NFLD, we will be seeing uh, observing for abdominal obesity. This will come from the West circumference, which he, she is already measuring, and family history of diabetes, hypertension, you know, coronary heart disease, liver disease, ghost zones, and cancers. And Asha is already measuring, you know, uh, edema for uh, for other uh, conditions like, uh, you know, antenatal mothers and so on. So we can uh, increase that screening population uh, towards that. So uh, uh, the proposed activities uh, uh, is already there. It is not overburdening the ASHA to, uh, to some more extent again, but it is, uh, you know, trying to get out, uh, you know, take out the data which is already there, tweak them in such a way that we get whatever is required for NFLD. At the PAC level, you know, when the medical officers, uh, you know, uh, diagnose the common entities through the population-based screening uh, system or the patient, you know, examines them on NFLD in focus and refers them to CAC for diagnosis, et cetera. Uh, is also some of the activities for which we are proposing at the PAC level. So the referral at the PAC, the diagnosis and the referral uh, is at the is at the PAC level, and this is already uh, you know uh, recorded in the form two, and we will try to put in the liver component there. Then when the patient reaches the CAC, in the already existing activities of NPC DCS. Now we will put in some more component like the doctor in the NCD clinic in the CAC will now be you know, enabled to perform an LFT and uh, the CBC, the labs, the, the public health laboratory system. Many states, they have got uh, different schemes of uh, laboratory investigations based on say, for example, Bihar has a scheme under chief ministers of Bihar. So in there, if you increase uh, the number of um, the, the different labs, if we tweak it in such a way that you have got LFT and CBC, uh, CBC for sure, then you have got what is known as the, 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 the FIP4, the fibrosis, you know, for score, et cetera, which is required for, you know, stratification of advanced liver disease. Then uh, from the, the uh, uh, from the FIP4 or the NFS score for on application, uh, uh, if, you, if you build the capacity of these uh, doctors there, they can get it investigated and they can even diagnose it as well. Then when they know that it's this, this person is falling into one category or one stage of the NFLD, then they can refer to the tertiary care in the district hospital or in the medical officer. So this capacity building of the different health functionaries can happen after uh, in the CAC and it is not a big deal and we are not adding anything which is very, very resource intensive, it is doable. And uh, uh, when the patient reaches the district hospital level, over and above the normal activities of the district hospital activities for NCDs, we are trying to put in some detailed investigation through the district hospital laboratory and management of patient uh, through the, uh, the screening. Say for example, there should be a management of NAFLD referral, then the risk stratification of advanced liver fibrosis, so if there, if there was no facility in the CAC, it will be done here. And for patients uh, who are in the in intermediate risk for liver fibrosis, we may do what is known as fibro scan according to the availability. So many of the district hospitals in many of the states can propose in their PIP that we would like to procure fibro scan and they can you know get this uh, done here. Accordingly, uh, the capacity building can also be uh, done here. Then recording continues with the inclusion of, you know, uh, liver report in the form 4, 5A, 5B of the NPC disease program, which is already there. So uh, then uh, here, 
this is where the, uh, till now till the district hospital it is in the realm of in the area, in the in, in the domain of the national health mission but the patients do not stop there patients uh, will, will not step no, stop there the care will not stop there so the the next level of care is usually the medical colleges your central government institutes where the more definitive care of NFLD will now happen. So we need further risk stratification of the advanced liver fibrosis. If there were no facility uh, in the district hospital from where they have been referred and for patients with intermediate risks, uh, we, we can now perform the fibrosis. So what we mean to say is in, if there is a medical officer in that particular district, we need not build the capacity of the district hospital rather build the capacity of the medical college with fibro scan, et cetera, and, and do it. So the, 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 the choice is with the state government, uh, which facility uh, they should, you know, they should, and they will be easily able to um, uh, develop for the care of, uh, for the diagnosis and management of NFL. It's usually done uh, in the gastroenterology department if it is available. If not, the medicine department can also uh, uh, do that. So uh, to Handhold to handhold the uh, NFLD integration. We can also hope in the future for a national center of excellence, which can you know design training manual, capacity building of master trainers, and also design IEC material. Then we we'll then you know monitor and evaluation uh, uh, evaluate the whole implementation of NFLD component in the NPC this year, because we 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 know that whatever uh, gets monitored, you know it gets done. So if we, we'll have to do a lot of monitoring and the national excellence uh, center of excellence may be uh, assisted by the regional say three four states together you know if we have a good uh, say a uh, good institute say in bihar then that center can take care of four five states and then even the states can also have their own state center of excellence for implementation of uh, the NFLD into the NPC, uh, NPC BCS and say for adapting, translating to the local language and the dissemination plan of the IEC for NFLD. So these are some of the proposed uh, <clears throat> center of excellence activities. And um, uh, we already have the national multi-sectoral excellence plan, uh, knowing very well that, you know, health, uh, especially the NCD is beyond health sector. And we need to work with many uh, various uh, uh, stakeholders, and that is why we already have what is known as the National Multisectoral Action Plan, and NFLD needs to, you know, sync uh, with the the vision and the goal of uh, uh, NMAP. This is what we are already doing it, and some of the key uh, strategic areas and the key outcomes of the uh, National Multisectoral Action Plan are already listed here. Here we need to see it as we have been doing for the last five, 10 minutes, uh, well, you know, trying to see it with, with the lens of uh, NAFLD so that we figure out whether things are already there for NAFLD and identify them, recognize them, and, you know, assure ourselves that we don't need anything. But wherever we require, uh, where we think that there is something, you know, specific to be added for NAFLD, we try to add there. And we also have uh, generic uh, promotive uh, you know, uh, strategies like the Feed India, you know, launched by uh, the Honorable Prime Minister in September 2020 for the, uh, the A-specific fitness protocols uh, in which Ministry of Health is also partner in developing and other strategies like the Eat Right campaign, you know, for taking care of the unhealthy diets. And uh, the way forward, which we see now is uh, what we are doing now, sensitization workshop. Inclusion. We have already done it and we are trying to do it in the PIP guidelines and then trying to include the financial uh, the guidelines of the PIP, then monitoring through the implementation uh, through PIP and then ensuring uh, whatever is required in terms of diagnostics and therapeutics um, for NFLD, then building the capacity and monitoring through, uh, through say, for example, the formats of the PBS or the continuum of care. Uh, HMIs that the ministry is gradually developing, and we may uh, uh, we may start in some pilot, but I think we or we are already doing it. Uh, we are already scaling up all across the country. We have given the uh, operation guidelines to every state of the uh, country and UT, uh, so they can already start you know 
uh, asking the ministry uh, what is required for NFL inclusion in NPC this year. So this is in brief what I wanted to share with you in, in a short span, how we have traveled from you know 1975 onwards to 2021, trying to drop in different components of NPC DCS, uh, like the kidneys uh, or the COPD or stroke, and now uh, the, the attention of you know due attention being given to uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver not just the liver component, but the non-alcoholic fatty liver, knowing very well that if you take care of the non-alcoholic fatty liver, many things about the NCT would be taken care of. So this is what I wanted to share. And thank you for giving me this opportunity.